from a professional soccer career to becoming a driving force in the mortgage industry, Brian Covey has shown what it takes to find your competitive edge, get off the sidelines, and get in the game. Find your competitive edge with Brian Covey. What's up, guys, and welcome back to another edition of Finding Your Competitive Edge. So today, you're going to hear about somebody that I love stories that we run in similar parallel paths of being a D1 college athlete, running track, two-time All-American. I don't know how people run that much. I played soccer. We ran enough for everybody, I felt like. But not only that, but Jennifer Watson has her own podcast. She's been a TEDx speaker, about to speak again in April. And by the time the show comes out, that'll be going live for her at Texas A&M. What I love about her story, we're going to talk about some today, is while you hear all these accolades, and a lot of times we share the good things, Mm -hmm. is through that there is times and seasons that she had to battle through things like you've probably experienced, where depression and probably questioning, is this the right path? Where do I go? We're going to talk about some of her journey. So stay tuned and make sure, because I believe a lot of your story, Jennifer's going to share that and you're going to be able to relate to it. But more importantly, you're going to be able to figure out how do you make the next step in your life to make sure you continue to win. So Jennifer, welcome to the show. I am so excited to be here, Brian, just to be here in this in this room, this energy with you. I'm so blessed. I can't wait to pour into your lovely community. <laughs> well, we cannot wait to because I know we run a lot of similar circles mm-hmm. and we were laughing yeah. like, oh, first time we've met, but yeah. you feel like you know right. each other. And I go, hold on, you know, I'm doing the preparation and right. I've seen all the things. And what stood out to me the most before we get into your story, yeah. this D1 college athlete piece, which I know people talk D1, this, that, and the other. Mm-hmm. Our oldest daughter is now going through that. She's a junior in high school. And she's like, where do I want to go play? What do I want to go do? All these decisions. And I thought back to my career. Mm -hmm. Let's talk to people about your experience because obviously running track, I'm just going to say, not an easy sport. You're having to compete against people, but two-time All-American. Like you weren't just competing. You you were good. Yes. You know, I loved being an athlete. And from a young age, I knew I was really fast. I mean, I played other sports, but I was very fast. I was beating the boys 10, 11, 12. I was was crushing them. But what I loved about the sport, it was so fast fun for me. I was already that high performer that I wanted to master something even at 10, 11, 12. And it just began my path that I started getting even highly recruited from college, like colleges and universities and D1 schools, like when I was 15, 16 years old. Now, I'm not going to lie, it was a little bit overwhelming for me because I was like, I just want to run. But it was such a great experience because it also allowed me, everyone, I'm an identical twin, identical twin, and I was able to get her to be able to come to the university with me. My parents, I grew up where we were pretty conservative. We didn't have a lot of money. So the fact that I could run in college and be there for my sister to help her get into college too and have an amazing experience. That to me was as important. But I have to tell you, being at a D1 school, 100%, I loved it, but it's a job. You know, I learned at 18, at a very young age, everything to quote, balance life between career, AKA track and field, and student life, between having fun, between diet, nutrition you know, becoming a leader. I was, became ultimately a captain on the team, really connecting with people on that level, knowing how to get back up when I didn't do well. And I just learned so much that I have taken into my journey now. Now, I know we're going to get into this, but there's definitely some things that I connected with being an athlete that weren't good and that I brought into some of my areas when I got into business leadership. But overall, I'm going to tell you, when I got my feet wet into sports, it brought out the best of me. I was so giddy about it. So if there's anyone out there that loves to be in their sport and master their craft, go for it. Move through it. It gives you so many opportunities and you learn so much about your life, about who you want to become and really creating that edge you want to be successful. I love that. I love that. So you got to tell me, what was your favorite yeah. part of running like did yeah. you have a specific race or like yeah. something that you loved with yeah. the events what was yeah. your favorite so i ran in college 800 and 1500 those were like everybody i want you to know that is a long sprint it is not a distance race i mean it is a long sprint and i loved it loved it but you know what's really interesting my favorite races were the relays the re- and it was it's already I was starting to see how much I loved community and coming together. Everybody thinks of track and field as an individual sport, but you guys got to remember we no, we are a team and we're, we're we're adding points as a team. But I did really like best like when I think of some of my favorite quote races and biggest kind of come from behinds with relays. 
those were it. I mean, honestly, just a little cats out of the bag. Even in my TEDx coming up, I'm speaking about one of those relay races. So I would say, honestly, the 800-1500 is an amazing race. 800, if I had to edge it out, would be my very favorite. But some of my best memories were relays. And already I could see how much I loved leading, yeah. helping others really elevate and us going together. Already I was seeing that was a, um, a superpower of mine and I loved it. And the, again, this is our playground. We get to do something that we love, but also we get to see our other gifts. Yeah. And I saw that start yeah. coming to fruition and that, oh, that was so wonderful to me. <laughs> I love it. Well, I have mad respect because yeah. even when we run today, like Iron yeah. Tribe, like they put an 800 on the board or something. I'm like, this is like a jog, this is recovery. Yeah. Sometimes we'll go a little faster, but I, I gotta imagine there were some races there, being an All-American, yeah. that you probably have some memories of. Yeah. And I love to ask this for athletes. Mm -hmm. yeah. Is there any one of those that stood out to you that you won or was like, mm -hmm. just if you look yeah. back on it, like yeah. I think about the favorite matches yeah. I had, right, in yeah. soccer, what was your favorite race that you got to compete in? Oh my gosh, that is, you know, I get chills from that because I have been so blessed in my life to have these, moments that I've written down. You know, all of us, I encourage all of you to do that. Write down your story, the ups and downs, but the, it's, there's, it's such a nostalgic moment for you. But I have to say it was at Big Ten Conference Championship. And like I said, it was the 800 meter and I broke my own record. I got a chance to, that was my first going to nationals, then ultimately becoming an All-American. You guys in track and field, it's the top eight. So remember, you not only get to nationals, but you usually have two or three semis to actually get it. So it's grueling. But I have to say, my favorite race was the Big Ten Championship. And everyone, so one of my favorite things to talk about and something that I'm talking about in my TEDx is knowing how to get into flow state. You know, we talk a lot about peak performance and high performance, but looking back and now how I've taken it to my business, it's not about high performance, peak performance that I've seen for me or other people where we feel this so us, like time stands still and we're just we can just tell in this case that i'm having a really fast race it's flow state everyone and when i look back i'm like that's exactly what's happening and later in life i was able to find tools and frameworks to consistently do it but that is why that was my favorite race i remember feeling i was flying i was in this zone i was tired but it was like i was outside my body just saying i'm tired but it's okay and I just kept going. I didn't know how to describe it, but I felt fast. I felt light. I felt so me. And I could, I was like, I'm, this is it. This is a race. I'm going to break. I could feel it. I'm going to break my record. I'm going to nationals. I could just feel it in the moment. Mm. And you guys, there's something about coming around that last corner, the momentum, the crowd. I mean, and you guys don't get, you know, I mean, I had like track blood marks on me. I mean, remember 800, I mean, you're running right by each other. There's pushing and shoving everyone, amen to that. But I remember it was a little bit of a bloodbath because a lot of people were trying to qualify for nationals. But I remember, and the reason why I mentioned that, I remember I wasn't really being touched a lot by them. Like I was just finding this way to move in and out, almost like a fast mm. car. I was so in the zone and I didn't know how to describe it then. And it would tap in once in a while. Now I've learned to do it consistently and what I call in a healthy way way because what happened and we can kind of go into that story is a little bit how I started looking at performance a little bit differently that wasn't really in alignment with where I could be the highest performance or be my highest version of self and some things that led to depression and beyond but I have to tell you I had so many races like that but that by far like as you were talking about it I, re I remember it like it was yesterday and everyone was like 25 plus years ago so I'll leave it at that but it was an amazing race and I got so much confidence in that not only in racing everyone Believing in myself in other situations where there's a lot of other good people. Sometimes we get nervous, like, are we as good? We all know this now, even as business leaders, like imposter syndrome. You guys, I was dealing with that at 18, and I'm telling you, winning stuff like that was just like that checkoff. Mm -hmm. Like, I have the goods. Now let's figure out how I can get there mentally and physically. Loved it. <laughs> oh, man. Well, I can tell just watching you tell yeah, the story. Yeah. It's one of those you're like, you're in the moment, you can see it again, and you know, and we're gonna unpack a lot of that. Hey guys, it's Brian here. I hope you are enjoying the show. By the way, if you're an entrepreneur or a solopreneur looking to grow your personal brand, make a bigger impact, maybe increase your leads and grow your revenue, let's help you get started today by connecting up with my friends over at the Brand Builders Group. You've heard me talk about them, but if you're new here, this is definitely the first step get you started in turning your reputation 
into revenue. Head over to freebrandcall.com forward slash Brian Covey. Again, to set up your free brand call, go to freebrandcall.com forward slash Brian Covey to set up a free strategy call with one of the team at Brand Builders, and they will dive into your specific goals for how you want to grow your personal brand. I can't wait to hear how it goes. I'd be remiss if we didn't go back to, you mentioned yeah. it, and I know as I was prepping for this, you talked about yeah. depression. I think yeah. a lot of athletes yeah. actually suffer from this, and now in the entrepreneurial world, yeah. it's talked about a little more open, but I would say it's still not talked about enough, yeah. and you know, mental toughness and different things yeah. have been brought to the forefront, yeah. and actually mental health awareness. Yeah. But I love that you bring this up because I think a lot of people don't yeah. realize even one, like what is depression? I think yeah. there's a misdiagnosis. People don't realize they yeah. could be suffering forms. Yeah. I love if you talk about your experience because yeah. I think a lot of people can relate yeah. to this. I know I can. Yeah. And just let's, let's talk about what that looked like yeah. for you. You know, it's really interesting. And I do a lot of talks at universities now mm-hmm. because I really want them to get it. And I actually do, everyone, you know, I get emotional about it because the thing is people don't realize, you know, depression can hit anyone. It's not biased first and foremost. And we still have this stereotype that people that are depressed are have the wind, you know, the shades pulled, curl up in their bed. And by the way, that's another form. And all of us, there's different variations in why we have depression. People don't realize, you guys, the statistics are very high. Business leaders, athletes, and I'm talking like, you know, next level athlete, that there's a high percentage that's gone up since post 2020 mm-hmm. on depression and anxiety. It's actually accelerating among high performers and business leaders. And everybody's like, why, why, why? And there's a lot of different layers to that. I work with a lot of people in that area as leaders and really break breaking free of that thought process and behavior and moving into more powerful flow state. I'll give you my reason. And again, a lot of high performance men can probably relate to this a little bit, but because I was so good at a young age, you know, I was, again, I, even before I knew I was fast, I was always the best in my class. And I was always getting awards for the best club of the year at Awana for church and <laughs> always check off, check off. And what I started noticing as a kid, again, with minimal tools is seeing that I got a quote, a lot of tension when I was successful. And then I wouldn't get as much when I wasn't. And I started associating success to attention, AK love. And then as I got better, I got more attention, more quote love. And then I was like, oh my gosh, if I don't win this race, I won't get attention, AK love. Also too, from my perspective, my twin was a little bit sick when we were younger and the focus was a lot on her to take care of her. So the way that I got a lot of attention was also doing a lot of good things and getting the pat on the back. So again, it just kind of ingrained this pattern. Everybody, by the way, I had a great growing up, but children have minimal tools and we see things the way we see them. And so I just started getting this progression as I got quote better, I started getting more in more depression. And then what happened, I would literally do everything to to the point of burnout, like work out twice as hard just to make sure, quote, I would win. But everyone, Mm -hmm. go figure. I won a lot of races, majority races, but I didn't win all of them. Mm -hmm. And I started seeing the cycle of fear and survival, and it led to huge anxiety and to fluctuation depression, like anxiety before the race, am I going to win? Then depression afterwards, if I didn't, like, oh my gosh, everybody hates me. You know, everybody doesn't love me. And by the way, I realize now looking back, like that wasn't true, but it was something that was a cycle and a pattern. Then you add different layers to that of the things that come up that you navigate in college. But the big thing was me was that wiring that I had from a very young age. And it got to the point where I was like, I can't lose. And if I do, I'll quote die. That's the way I kind of was seeing it, everybody looking back. Mm-hmm. And so it just got to the point by the end of college, even though I was smiling, everyone, mm-hmm. I was making the good grades. I was going to be getting into PT school, which is very competitive as well. Mm-hmm. I had friends, all the things, and the smile was so exhausting, mm-hmm. so exhausting, everyone. And I got to the point, I'm like, this has got to change. This has got to change. And Side note, you guys, I know you've all seen it. I mean, Michael Phelps, what is he won, like 14, 18 gold medals or something? I mean, he just wrote a book on that, Depression, Simone Biles. Like, you see this yeah. happening. Again, I'm not saying they had the same story as me, but I'm seeing a lot of correlations, not just in past athletes that are mm-hmm. business leaders, but other high-performing business leaders that were seeing that happen. And for me, I, on, you know, I got to that point where it's like either the kitchen floor or the bathroom floor. I was literally right going into PT school, and I'm like, something's got to give. Yeah. I'm like... And I remember questioning, you guys, I'm kind of dropping a few hints about my TEDx because I do want to see high performance change in the relationship to it. But I remember sitting on my floor 
I said, God, I actually really want to check out because I have to believe it doesn't have to feel this miserable to get happy and successful. I'm like, that's just jacked up. Like, mm -hmm. I just sat there thinking that. I'm like, I really want to check out. You guys, even with all my success, I'm like, I literally want to check out. Go figure, my mom called right at that moment. Mm -hmm. I kid you not. And I remember she asked, how are you doing? You guys, at this point, I was lying to my family. Be totally honest. Yeah. I'm fine. That kind of like, I'm fine. I'm fine. That night, she says, how are you doing? Wasn't expecting anything. I'm like, mom, I'm not doing well. She's like, well, what do you mean? Like, is something wrong? Are you sick? I'm like, no, mom, I am not doing, and I didn't know how to describe it because it was still the suck it up buttercup in college. We didn't have any psychologists like they have now. Like, I had yeah. no idea what I was experiencing. I really didn't, like, why am I not happy? I was mm. in shame. I was disappointed in myself. But I remember God literally coming down like, you have to tell one person and she's mm -hmm. safe to tell. And anybody mm -hmm. that's dealing with this, we're not asking you to go necessarily on a podcast right away. Sometimes it's just stepping in with one person. When she called, I literally was so pulled back, but I literally felt God say to me, you need to tell her. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, mom, I don't know why, but mm -hmm. I don't wanna be here anymore. She's like, what do you mean? I'm like, I kinda wanna take my life and I have so much goodness, and I'm ashamed. I just mm -hmm. broke down, and my mom, being my mom, beautiful woman, um, just supported me. She didn't know how to help me. Yeah. However, she had experienced depression when she was younger. Hmm. So it, it was this beautiful awareness of her coming she out. And, and I just, you guys, and that started the momentum of she accepted me, yeah. you know, and that broke the, the you guys, the, opened the floodgates. I'll, I'll let everybody know that. Again, finding one person that you believe that you can just share something to that you're hurting in mm -hmm. and you know, that you're ashamed about. You know, this was something that's usually why we don't tell people something we're ashamed about. And when I did that, it started my journey toward getting what true wellness was, not mm -hmm. just the physical, also what true mental wellness was. I will say that I don't believe I was mentally tough in college. I believe I was in fight or flight most mm -hmm. of the time, and I was doing everything I could to get pats on the back to compensate for lack of self-worth. That to me is not mentally tough, everyone. That's yeah. not, you know, and we can go into what real mental toughness is, but everybody thought I was, so we're surprised. I'm like, no, I really wasn't looking back ever mentally tough. Yeah. I got tough when I got <laughs> the courage to actually take the step and say, I'm not doing well, mom. Yeah. And again, God started bringing more people, places, opportunities. When you get it out of the closet and put it into the light. And I started finding hope and started slowly getting better. It took some time, you guys. I started with traditional type of treatment of going to a counselor, doing you know, an, you know antidepressants. No judgment on that, everybody. It wasn't for me. It didn't work. It actually made things worse. Yeah. So I started looking more into holistic medicine, diet, EMDR, cognitive remapping, you know, c better communities. All, I mean, I doubled down. I took a butter knife, everyone, and I was whacking myself through the forest. I'm like, I've got to believe it's better than this, and I'm going for it. And I'm mm -hmm. like, I, I got to believe it's for me and for anyone else suffering like this. Yeah. And I just started it and thus began my journey toward healing, yeah. getting what overall health was, what mental health truly was, what true performance was. And it gave me the opportunity to step into my own PT practice that was holistic, where I had past athletes that had back pain and depression. I dealt with military that had ankle fractures and PTSD. Like, I could treat them. Yeah. My God, don't we all do this? Like, why are, why are you having me go through all this? Mm -hmm. Why? And I'm like, I like it's so emotional. I'm like, think of the people that would have walked away and never been healed and stepped into my practice if I wouldn't have gone through the experience so I could actually treat them yeah. as a whole. It literally brings tears to my eyes, you guys, I, that I've been able to help support people and thousands of people in their mm -hmm. healing mind, body, soul journey. And that was my first, by the way, businesses, two brick and mortars that grew profoundly because we were actually doing real healthcare. Yeah. We were doing real wellness and it started with my mom asking me how you are. And I said, I'm not well. And that's where it starts, you guys, is yeah. one one courageous conversation that's honest at a time. And thus begin my journey toward healing and really doing the things I love to do as a business owner and make an impact the way I do. I love it. <laughs> and we'll dive into that. So I'll go back, because you always think of this. It, it's without yeah. fail, almost every show I think about what you just shared. Yeah. And one of my friends, Roy Vaden, will share this as yeah. your most uniquely and qualified 
to serve who you once were. That's mm-hmm. the shorter version of it. Yeah. But you think about all those experiences, uniquely qualified yeah. you, gave you the experience. But I want to go back yeah. because you talked about being on the floor and all this calling your mom and all that. Yeah. And so somebody might be listening and thinking, like, I'm pretty close to that. Are they all yeah. there? Was was that the bottom for you? Was yeah. that the point at which yeah. you, you look back now and go, that was... That, that was, was the rock bottom yes, piece. Yes, that was definitely rock bottom. But here's the deal, everyone. When I was on my journey toward health, because some things made it worse. Like I said, I tried some antidepressants, talk therapy for me, didn't work. So there was points where it was the roller coaster. Mm-hmm. You know, like it wasn't like rock bottom, but it was like, oh, I was thought I was getting better. But then I remembered as a physical therapist after knee surgeries where we tell people like you're going to get a little bit better, then it dips a little bit. This is part of the breakdown and buildup of you physically, it's the same thing with your mind, everyone. So I really, I got very lucky that I got involved with a coach. She was a coach slash counselor at a very, Mm. you know, very early stage in healing. So I could understand like, am I going backwards? I wasn't a rock bottom, that was my rock bottom, but I have to say, there were times in the journey, everyone, it's gonna be that way. It's just Mm -hmm. like going after your goals, you know, when you are healing from something, it's never linear. So yeah. I had to really, you know, grow, you know, grow the grit and the grace. I know Amberly talks a lot about oh, that, yeah. but really learning to have patience in that, patience with myself, it was really uncomfortable. I mean, I'm, I'm gonna tell you, you know, when you take this step into helping yourself, whatever it is, everyone, and if you're at this space right now where you are on the floor, I'm an identical twin everyone and we are 99.9% genetic blueprint yet I have my own unique blueprint okay Mm -hmm. you are here for a reason at this very particular time and if you need to DM me just for someone to actually say you're here for a reason Mm -hmm. that actually everyone can be enough there were times where I was depressed where just hearing someone say hi to me, it wasn't that they knew what was going on, that I mattered, that I contributed. So for any of you that are going through that, it's going to be a little rough. You need to get your community. Obviously, I got a lot of coaches and, and people supporting me um, because it's the, these are kind of things that you just can't do it alone. I mean, I tried, but I obviously was not successful. So I'm going to encourage all of you, if you're going through that space, you know, I get it. Um, it's time to break free of the shame. Mm-hmm. Step in with one person. It's going to be a little rough, but no, it sucks where you're at. <laughs> it's the whole, we talk about it all the time, right? Choose your hard. Yeah. I'm like, you know, it's going to be a little rough, but there's going to be beauty on the other side. Since then, I've done all this other inner child, you know, yeah. going to the shadow work, you know, all this other stuff since then. So I've just continued the evolving evolution because. Everyone just want to let you know we're always healing. We're always evolving. There's mm-hmm. always going to be old stories that come up. But if you're at this point where you're like, Jennifer, I, I really don't want to be here. You guys, th- there's no shame in that it's urgent. We, we want to make sure that you're creating safety and that we can get you where you're, you're feeling that you can contribute. But at the end of the day, there's no shame in that. I, I talk to people about mental health as easily as physical health in every, I mean, it's so easy for me to do that because of Mm -hmm. my journey, but no, it just takes one conversation, one person to start the momentum. And then you gotta be willing to be patient and know it's not going to be a linear healing, healing, because I did have moments where I was like, is this really going in the right direction? Yeah. Having other people believe it for you is key when you're trying to get out of the ditch. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and I love, yeah. I love that you bring that, you only need to reach yeah. out to the one person. Yeah. I think if I were to listen to this today, yeah. and everybody's listening now, is you don't need to put this stuff on social. It's not go out there, like you said, yeah. like you don't have to find like yeah. all these people that you have to go to and yeah. get their advice and different things, all these different treatments. Yeah. It's the one person that you ask for help that mm-hmm. could be the spark and that really yeah. ignite that to move you forward. And yes. so as I listen, I think about, man, how, how yeah. strong was that of you to say, mm-hmm. And I know God's prompting you and we have similar faith yeah. on this, but I, I would encourage you when you have those prompts, that yeah. is that opportunity and window. Yeah. Maybe you're on the other side of it. Yeah. You're listening to a friend yeah. and you say, how are you? Yeah. And you can be the one yeah. person that they open up to. So yeah. just don't want to miss that moment. You know, and there's one thing I have to say with going through this experience. I want you guys to know this. All the things I've done as an entrepreneur feel so much less painful, but I'm a more of a risk taker because of it. Because I've been through the dark side. <laughs> Like to me, I have nothing to lose at this point. Like that's what it's given me as well from an entrepreneur. I 
calculated risks. I take risks all the time. And some of the risks, painful. (laughs) They didn't show up the way I wanted to, but it pales in comparison. It's like going through this experience, the Mm -hmm. gift, I will say the gift of it, has allowed me to create perspective, create this bandwidth, this reserve, um, using tools to get all the weeds back in the lane when I fall down because I know how to handle it now. It has made me lethal in business, you guys, because there's times in business it does not go your way. Let's just be financially, yep. impact wise, whatever, speech wise. You know, I'm a speaker now. There's times I knock out of the park, there's times I do not. And I've learned so many tools to shift into a high performance again yeah. when things really hit the fan because I learned from being so deep in. Not that people should have to maybe go to that level, but that's the gift that came from mine mm-hmm. going to that level. I love that you talk about that. And you yeah. also mentioned the connection. I want yeah. to expand on that because your yeah. experience PT and then yeah. now going through the mental side yeah. of it, like the connection between the physical and the mental side, mm. yeah. which let's just be real. As athletes, like we, I went through, I didn't yeah. even know the connection, yeah. right? I was fortunate my dad's a psychologist. Yeah. So like we did some yeah. visualization. I would learn it, but you're basically just doing what your coach tells right. you. Later, right. you're able to look back. Right. And now that you've studied it, what's your perspective on that of the connection between yeah. the mental and physical side yeah. and how people can tap into yeah. I believe you need both. Yeah. They're, you know, I will say this, they are equally important depending on where you're at in life and what the big thing you're trying to navigate. One at that point might might be a little bit more the Trump king, if that makes sense, or the Trump queen. And they're going to feed off each other in so many powerful ways. There's, you guys, I, I get into the neuroscience about this. I teach flow state a lot, but there's so many nerve and vascular connections between the brain and skeletal muscle, between the brain and the gut. You know, and we have this whole ecosystem. Think of like, you know, I always love this example because people get this. Think of a baseball team, you guys. That's how many body systems you basically have, like individual, you know, systems in the body. And then you have some systems that connect more than others. Think of like the pitcher and the catcher, right? Yeah. Your brain and skeletal muscle have a big connection. Your brain and the gut. We t- hear a lot about the gut, you know, gut brain action. Access. There's some that talk more with each other. So you can find ways because there's physical that connect with the mental in really powerful ways using tools to depending on what you want to amp up more. If it's more the physical skeletal muscle versus the gut, there's things you can actually do to do physically to enhance mental and mental to enhance physical. It is, it, it's, you guys were wired that way. We, we separate them so much, which is so interesting to me when really, you know, we see that when we test ourselves physically, it helps us mentally and we test ourselves mentally it helps us physically and we have anecdotal stories and people are like yeah but is there science there's total science there's neurovascular nerve and vascular connections between our brain and our action muscles our skeletal mm-hmm. muscles among other the, the other systems we're talking about so i love joe dispenza you guys there is something with visualization of getting it now i've got i've had people get like a little anatomy book out and visualize the connection with their brain to healing their knee i did that with knee rehab not just the physical the mental of visualizing myself running again, visualizing the meniscus healing. Like mm-hmm. there's huge power in that, everyone. And it's not voodoo. It's literally neural biomechanical connections between our brain and body. If I had to choose one or the other, because everybody pushes me to that, like if you had to choose the physical over the mental, even though they're both influencing each other, here's the deal, everybody. And Tony Robbins talks about it all the time. You have to move. You have to move to start shaking things loose mm-hmm. in the mind anyway. We live in a society now where 80 to 90% of us are sitting in front of a computer screen, let alone all the EMFs coming off that, but we're just sitting for periods of time. And everyone, we were hunters and gatherers. We were meant to move. And I encourage everyone, you will feel better. You don't have to hire a coach, get up every hour, do 20 burpees or 20 fast squats or a five minute brisk walk outside in the sun. You guys, I get up every hour, every hour. And again, I get up more than that. I'm just saying a minimum of that where I'm shaking. I get up and dance. People see me on social. I love to dance. There's all this physics behind this, you guys. It not only increases blood flow to these areas, your brain and your your skeletal muscles, but it actually helps increase your resonance, your frequency of all your other systems in the body. Mm-hmm. Okay, so going from many of you have probably heard of different levels of emotions and different levels of frequencies. We could go into that today, but movement starts getting you higher up in emotion, higher up in frequency, higher up in energy levels in your body. There's a lot of science behind that. We can go into some of that, but at the end of the day everyone movement is key to help not only physically but ultimately mentally start moving emotions through emotions are 
energy, just like food is. Your gut digests and moves it through. You need movement to move energy and, quote, emotion through. If you did just that, you would feel a little better, even if you're suffering with kind of chronic depression right now. Move, move, (laughs) move. (laughs) Keep moving. Keep moving. Yeah. There was, um, I'm trying to remember the the Dr. Elko that works with Alabama and some others. He would always say, neurons that fire together, wire together, and all this stuff. That always stuck with me. Like, Okay, so we need that to work together and we need to yeah. move and do all that yeah. stuff. And, and I've found today in leadership, I'd love for you to talk about this, is yeah. really it used to be when we were coming up in corporate America, like yeah. it, it was all about the performance and the results in the office yeah. and like that's how people moved yeah. up, up the ranks. And, and now you really see this push towards if you don't have your health and the relationships and things, yeah. you, you can have all the success in the world, yeah. but it's not there. Yeah. How do you think this plays into leadership? And, and how great leaders yeah. perform today. Yeah, you know, I speak a lot, not only about creating mental edge in a healthy way for leaders, but also what I call healthy, high performance. And for one, creating a different relationship like we talked about. There's a lot, you guys, there's a lot of tools and frameworks to rewire that because it's it's like saying to yourself, why well, get that, Jennifer, but you keep going back to the cookie jar and eating the cookie. It's hard to get out of that habit of burn yourself to the ground, do 20 hours a day, be the unemotional leader, don't connect to your team. You guys, this is how we were kind of, at least I was, my era, like that's how we were trained. So breaking free of that does often require some coaching and in, in breaking through some of that. When you're in a healthier relationship with performance, when you're in a healthier mindset, okay, even if the rest of your team is struggling in those areas too, Mastermind, you guys, it's called cross contamination. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I'm a physical therapist, so sometimes I say that, but the, the energy that you're going to exude, you guys, there's huge research on that. When you're in a higher state, when you're in high mental health, you, you actually start boosting IQs. You guys, this, this is research based when there's a happier, healthier, mentally positive environment versus one that's more toxic. IQs go up and down. Research, you guys, think about that, let alone it allows people to start pulling in that energy, mm-hmm. creating happiness, creating mental health as well. Now, when they're struggling too, there needs to be a point where leaders are like, you can't be the counselor, but the leader is absolutely supposed to be looking at their team and seeing where they need support and getting support where necessary. The new leader of today not only has to be mentally well because it allows them to see if there's things going on in the environment, allows emotional intelligence, awareness of their team, but it also is going to help him pick out things that are needed to help the team and create a healthy performance for them when he's in a healthier relationship with performance, aka not working 20 hours every day, burn himself the ground, not being emotional. Remember, everyone, they're watching you, okay? So if they're seeing you're mentally healthy, you're doing activities, they're like, oh, what is he doing over there? You are creating a performance like, oh, wow, we didn't do what we we thought we would do, but now we're going to do some different things to kind of help out versus like get all upset about it and work another 20 hours to, you know, make it better. Like they're watching you, everyone. So if you can create a mental edge and a healthy high performance, they're not only going to get some of that vibe from you, they're also going to be feeling more appreciated because you're actually being aware of them. And then you can get help where needed. Sometimes it, it is something you can do, you know, to help with performance. We have frameworks and systems in our company. Sometimes not. But a good leader is not there to get everything done him or herself. It's finding the right people. We all know this. What, like... For you know, Ford, like who made the cars? He didn't even know anything about cars. Did you guys know that? He knew nothing about cars. He found the people to make it yeah. work. But when you're mentally well, you're gonna make better choices. You're gonna start seeing problems to or solutions to problems more quickly. You're gonna see your team and be more aware when you are dealing with your own junk. And you, and I call it more the emotional state because when you get mentally un- unwell you get the lower frequency of emotions. It's like saran wrap to your brain. Mm -hmm. Everything gets hard for you and you start missing things with your team. Mm -hmm. I went on a 12 week journey in in the summer of 2022. I lived out of my suitcase, literally, Mm -hmm. for 12 weeks. I did not allow myself to go into um, a hotel. There's a whole story behind that. But one of the things I did is I went around to all business owners in businesses and asked, what are the top three things that you find you need in your team is talking about mm. like that they need that they feel is a bottleneck or they're struggling in in the business number one was mental health this was 2022 still tanking everybody they were all struggling they weren't telling the leader struggling do you think that affected productivity yes yeah. do you think it affected team culture yes do you think it affected performance yes the second was 
I thought they were so interesting navigating tough conversations. They felt like the leader didn't really, wasn't really in touch with them, what they needed to talk about, whether it was for the business or about other things going on. And the third piece is they wanted to be contributing not only to their, the business and feel excited about the vision. They wanted to feel that the leader cared, that they were personally growing. Mm. You guys think about that. Think about that. Mental wellness, okay? They want to be personally growing. Think about that. These are, you can't help them with their mental health or get the right help. You can't help them personally grow if you're not personally evolving and creating health. There's no, this is what they want more than, you guys, more than salary, more than money. They wanted a leader that cared, a leader that was mentally healthy, Mm -hmm. giving them frameworks to help them get mentally healthy and that they could contribute to the team. This is the new it team everyone leaders need to start looking at things differently because employees want to be transformed they want to be high performing not only in the field off the field at home they want to personally develop they want to contribute to your cause they want to trust you they want to believe that you actually are listening to them and aware of their needs and even if you can't help them that you're willing to get them support where they can yeah bottom line everyone and you cannot do that going back to your original question brian you cannot do that when you have a saran wrap on of emotions that's being caused by mental health tanking push 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 doing 20 hour days you you guys i know all of you that are listening to high performers you might even say to me jennifer i've been successful i i work with multimillionaires. i work with people that that are very successful you know why they come to me I'm in resistance, my mental health is tanking, my performance is starting to go down, my money is starting to kind of go down a little bit, my team's disconnected. You guys, this is a big deal. If you actually want to enjoy success, enjoy performance, enjoy your team, have your team enjoy you, you have to take care of your mental emotional health. One of my major speeches that I have with a lot of business leaders is how to shift into a powerful emotional state so then your team and you can actually ascend and be in sustainable performance. Many leaders say, Jennifer, I thought we're not supposed to be leading by emotions. I'm like, exactly. And if you don't acknowledge your emotions, move them through Mm -hmm. so you can be in a powerful state, they are absolutely running the show every day of the week and twice on Sunday. Guy, girl, you don't have to, quote, be emotional or not. So I agree. But you have to learn how to deal with your stuff. Find it out. Use a coach. Find other people to help you move out of the weeds back into your lane. Get mentally well so you can watch others and help them get mentally well. You all raise the boat then together. Everything gets super easy. Talking about my race and flow state. If you want to talk about healthy, high performance, start with mental, emotional health first, then let's get you healthy, high performing. Watch your team. I've literally gone into teams. They're like, we haven't changed frameworks, Jennifer. We haven't changed anything else, but going through shifting mental, emotional states and having more of a healthy, high performance that you've taught us. Somehow miraculously, our team's getting along and somehow miraculously we're laughing and somehow miraculously we're making more money. You guys, this stuff is the big domino. And I went around to companies in 2022 and they're saying this. So let's listen to the people around us. Let's look at the foundation of leadership and understand that we have to connect with people in a different way. If you want high performance from them, you got to start looking at a healthier way to do it. And you have to be open to supporting them in mental health, even if that means you write a check to someone that can come in and do a workshop to help them out. Game over and you're going to have a team that will that can't help to want to bite in to the vision and mission that you desire. Everyone I work with, including you, Brian, I love it because I love your energy. And I always say he's an influencer. And the reason why I believe you're an influencer is not only all the goals you have, but the way you take care of yourself. It's very obvious, okay? Mentally, emotionally, it doesn't mean we're perfect at it all the time. No. But I do believe that to become an influencer, there's a lot of you know, different ideas of what that means. But for me, for a lot of people, I can tell when they're consistently a powerful influencer because they get the need to keep mm-hmm. this little temple God gave us, mind, body, soul, in a really high flow state. When you got that, everything else is a fl- influencer that is necessary to become the leader that you want to be in in a powerful, influential way is easy. <laughs> I lo- we could go a lot of different yeah. ways. I want to go back because if somebody's listening yeah. to this today, they're like, dude, this is awesome. Like Uh, Jennifer, I'm excited. Maybe they're a high performer and they're realizing, yeah, you know, I'm falling into these traps as well. Like all those three things you went through, like we're we're experiencing that with themselves as a leader and their team. 
how does one shift their mm-hmm. state? Because yeah. you're talking about that. I know Tony Robbins talks yeah. about it, and yeah. you know, I, I've done my research. But you clearly, yeah. you love this and are passionate yeah. about it. How yeah. does somebody today yeah. recognize they, they get in these funks yeah. and these these emotional states, yes. as we call them? How do they start to work their way out? Yeah, I love that. And I want to give you guys free free tools because a lot of times we do all this inspiration fluff, but I really want to give you something. I think that's so important. I will say this side note. For those of you that have, you know, pretty significant trauma, different things, you know, these are going to scratch the surface. Sometimes you're going to need additional support. This is not about us trying to get you to, you know, buy into coaches, but I will say that you guys, I did ultimately need a little bit of that, but these tools, I will say you guys will, will create momentum for you. We've often heard the phrase in many different areas of our life, the power of the pause, mm-hmm. the power of the pause. When you're feeling a yucky emotion, whatever it is, you guys, fear, anxiety, frustration, anger, rage, whatever, okay, I encourage all of you to pause, not put a timer on, I'm not kidding you when I say this, and there's a reason why you want to do it five minutes, okay? There's a lot of neuroscience behind why you want to do this, but understand when you give yourself five minutes and just sit, I literally worked with a business owner once and he said, is this what I'm paying you for? I'm like, yeah, you actually are. He's like, just sit, just sit, just sit, just sit, just sit just sit get your phone away and sit not thinking about anything else just sit what that does to your brain and body it says wow jennifer's not running from this this means that it's safe to digest what did i say emotions or energy you guys just by sitting for five minutes i guarantee you you will feel a little better like climb up a little bit maybe from anger to a little bit maybe hope out of the anger you'll climb up a little bit if not a lot depending on the situation at hand so Mm -hmm. there's power in the pause five minutes everyone breathe i'm not going to give you a specific framework of breath work today just be aware that you're breathing as you're moving the energy through from that point, everyone, I'm a big believer, again, when we talked about before, doing about a minute, you guys, of some type of high velocity, like an anaerobic type of motion. I don't care if it's a minute of burpees, a minute of jumping jacks, a minute of just fast squats, a minute of a sprint outside. I love to dance. You guys, there's a lot of research. The reason why I like dance, it opens up a lot of blood flow to many areas of your body, mind, in all the systems in your body, but also it opens up a lot of what we call chakras. You guys, those are energy points in our body. So it's one of the best activities to do in a short period to boost endorphins, mm-hmm. serotonin, things like you know dopamine for motivation. So that's why I like dance. You don't have to do that, but that is kind of like the shotgun approach that boosts you because it starts dropping things now into your system. More yeah. than just blood flow, it starts dropping things into your system. I call them the happy pills, the serotonin, the dopamine, you know, norepinephrine, and all these other things that can really help start boosting your frequency up. At that point, you want to get a journal book out. You guys, I'm not sitting here saying that you have to do a five-day diatribe, but writing even like a page of what's coming up. Like purge it out. I don't care how negative it is. I don't care how positive. What you'll find is when you do that, that again keeps boosting up your frequency, boosting up your emotion. You will notice this all takes about five to seven minutes when you do this. Mm And when that happens, many of you will feel and experience, wow, I feel a little better if not a lot. That's huge confidence. Like Mm -hmm. I can master something here. You're giving evidence to your brain and your body that it was safe and you're mastering. like, what else can I do? The reason why journaling is really important is when we write, not type, you guys, when we write, it accesses many areas of our brain, which include the creative zone, decision-making, the frontal lobe for Mm -hmm. forethought, perspective change. Because a lot of times we're in the emotion, right? Mm -hmm. We're not really being in a good perspective or even a right perspective or actually a real perspective. What is the research? 9% of the things that we think are going to happen don't end up happening, right. right? So really pausing five minutes, moving, love the dance part for a minute, and then journaling for like two, three minutes. You guys, this will, again, take you you know five to eight minutes depending on how long you have. From there, everyone, this is a big one for a lot of people, and I encourage you all to, this is the big one. This is how this is going to seal the deal. Many of you have probably heard of all the other stuff before, maybe do it okay this is going to seal the deal what i want you to do is look outside or go outside and look for something red 
Okay. This is going to redirect your brain. So if it's still kind of on that hamster wheel of thinking about whatever fear or problem you have, it's, it kind of is like a cortisone shot to the knee. Mm. It rips the bandaid off like for good, at least for mm. a good hour. If you look outside or go outside, look outside, look for something red. Why red? Red, you guys, is the color of our internal system. It's vasculature. Mm. Okay. It's also a way when we look for red, it activates all of our mm. systems in our body. And when you focus on something, like you're trying to find something red outside, again, rips the bandit off. It literally deters your brain from going into the whole repetitive hamster wheel effect mm -hmm. that we, we often hear, not to go too deep, everybody, the amygdala hijack, where it keeps perseverating on the problem. When you focus for 30 seconds to a minute, you guys, this stuff works. It sounds simple. I want you to get something. There's 100,000 miles of blood vessels in your brain. Did you know that, everyone? There is over a hundred billion nerve connections in your brain. Mm -hmm. This little stuff, I'm telling you, it wants to do this thing called life with you. It wants to be on the same page as you. Give it another freaking stimulus. If you want it to not keep doing the hamster wheel, I'm telling you, they're like, that's that simple. Yes, it's that simple. Mm -hmm. You guys seal the deal with this part. Look for something outside. If you find it in five seconds, keep doing it for 30 seconds to a minute. It's gonna redirect the brain keep breaking the pattern, get you out of that fear. And then also the, the red, you guys red. So rainbow, you guys, all the different colors have different frequencies to it. Don't go into all of them, but the red is the one that's going to activate your system the most because mm. red is the most other than blue because of the nerves and the neurovascular system, but vascular is really red. So that's, what's going to give you the oxygen, the life, the yeah. frequency of red and looking for red is what's inside of you that helps you optimize performance. You guys, the stuff is real. So pause five minutes, everybody, pause. You're not thinking about anything, you're just pausing. Next, you're going to move ballistically, high level, anaerobic. I'd encourage people to dance. We all like to dance, no matter what anybody says, we all like to dance. Okay, journal for two or three minutes yeah. and then redirect if you're still getting it. I, you guys, I guarantee you'll be like, oh my gosh, this stuff works. You will find going back to the computer, going back to whatever problem you had, for one, it won't seem as big of a problem. Number two, you'll see a solution. I literally just had my car break down, which I wasn't even planning to, like earlier this week. Had to jump, you know, jump the car and then put a bunch of money into it. And then I end up having to buy a new car, which I have outside the studio. You guys, I, how do I do that? And I had a busy day ahead of me. I got like a new car in like two hours by doing this stuff. Because in the, and that, that's kind of a simple example, but a lot of us have had cars break down, mm -hmm. you guys. Th things like that can steal our day. I'm telling you right now, when you do this stuff, you don't ruminate on the problem anymore. Mm -hmm. How many of us even have a bad email that we open up in the morning and we ruminate on it all day and it robs us of our mental health? Then we can't connect with our team that we're talking about sooner, I mean, a little bit yeah. ago. We can't, we're not aware of their needs. Our productivity goes down. We get ruminating on this hamster wheel so often even with a bad email it doesn't have to be a yeah. car broken down this stuff and that's okay everyone there's no shame in that find what you ruminate the most about implement this tool that takes less than seven minutes mm. i guarantee you guys you're gonna see a difference the mm. brain and body wants what you want but you have to be willing to give it something different mm. in the mind and then all of a sudden it uses all the blood vessels and all the nerves that we talked about here and redirects and keep doing that time and time again, yeah. just like going to the gym. And it starts choosing that. So when you have a car breakdown, I had like three things happen in the same day. Like, how did you deal with that, Jennifer, and still have an effective day? You guys, stuff like this. Yeah. I am not magical. I'm no different than you. You can do this too when you understand the chemistry of your brain and body to work mm -hmm. for you. I got back into flow state easy that day. And I had some mm -hmm. other things go on earlier that day that were a little bit harder, but I'm like, that's okay because I know what it takes to move this into a powerful state. It is so freaking brilliant, everyone. Yeah. But you gotta know how to master it. So try that technique. If you find you're in a low frequency or you're still ruminating on something, do that. And this will take you again seven, eight minutes. And I, I, I'm telling you, you're gonna see a shift. And once you do the confidence to do it again and keep doing it again, the momentum continues. And before you know it, you're rewired to a new way of acting. Mm -hmm. So when you have things come up like I did, you just automatically go over here. Now that yeah. doesn't mean you're not gonna have bad days, everyone. I'm not gonna be very, very clear. What I'm saying is, is these tools and what flow state means and the 
high performers that work with me and understand about flow state, it's learning how to get out of the weeds into your lane quickly. Life gets lifey sometimes. Mm -hmm. We're not going to always have the perfect day, but you can still not just salvage your day, not just salvage your day, but actually accelerate your day. I've had days where I actually had accelerated things done, not only in high performance, but more done than I thought I could get done because I actually got in this endorphin rush because of what happened earlier. Then I shifted with some of my tools and I was able to use some of that energy. Yeah. <laughs> into something good. You guys, this is for you. You, you, It's not just for me. And obviously I came from a girl that was on the floor. Okay. So when I tell you this, if I can do it, anyone can. And I will say this at the end of the day, every day of the week and twice on Sunday, what has been my greatest success? It has absolutely been to heal my brain and teach it how to thrive, heal my body and teach it how to thrive in a healthy performance, a healthy mind state, because my team loves me for it. The world loves me for it. I show up in myself. I'm more aware of everybody else's needs. I get the help for them that they need. I make powerful decisions. I communicate. My emotional intelligence is better. My intuition is up. Mm -hmm. Everything is better when you get rid of this mask. Own it, people. It sucks. It feels a little hard at first. Get your people. Get us in your world and help. Let us believe it for you. Let us show you tools. Do that tool, everyone, and you will see an amazing difference in the life that you can have every day, yeah. no matter the environment. I love it. Well, hopefully people are taking notes or they rewind back and go, Yeah, this is what we need to make sure that we're actually implementing yeah. tools. And I love you share that. I had a coach that worked with me, gosh, it's been six, seven years ago and introduced yeah. some of that. And I was like, yeah. has nobody taught this before? You know, yeah. and it brings it back to the coaching. Yeah, I would love for you to expand on that yeah. because I think people are listening yeah. to this. So like, this is great. I'm going to try this. And maybe yeah. they do. Yeah. Most won't. Let's just, yeah. I'll just call it what it is. And, yeah. and that's okay because yeah. you might need somebody to come alongside you yeah. and you being a high performance coach and you've got all these accolades and yeah. all these things. Yeah. Like talk to me about what that looks like. Cause I think people yeah. listening a lot of times yeah. I think about, there's no way I would be where I am. And a lot yeah. of people I have met, at least the successful ones that yeah. I want to emulate yeah. that they're successful in multi areas, yeah. not just make money or yeah. just fit, you know, right. one of those They've got a coach in their corner. Mm-hmm. They just 100%. do. 100%. And people want to avoid, I always say, they want to avoid the hard work yeah. and, and it's there. Yeah. Talk to those people about why they should have a coach and yeah. someone you know that's a high performance coach. And what, yeah. e- what even is that? Yeah. Right? Like, let's break that down. Some. No, absolutely. So I am a big believer. Everyone, you know, I wouldn't have gotten out of the mess if I wouldn't have. But more importantly, actually what Brian said, you know, I believe if you really want to shatter the glass ceiling on the life you desire, and I'm assuming for any of you that are listening to this podcast that, you know, you want to live your your highest potential life. Because no matter if you live a long time, life is short. And let's really make that happen. And a coach not only helps you get out of your junk, but helps you accelerate so many things. When I look at, I've really evolved my coaching. And I believe that the reason why I do the high performance coaching the way I do it is because I work with, yes, a lot of small to mid-sized business leaders, executives, just people that want to high perform in other areas of their life. And they're realizing, everyone, that they don't have the performance or excuse me, the high performance relationship that they should have. They had what I had. Where, by the way, you can have success, everyone, for a while. We just said that, everyone. Mm -hmm. You can until you kind of self-implode or you feel miserable. You're like, this is not what I wanted. You know, I'm sitting in my multi-million dollar house and I want to kind of like not be here. That's a sure sign, you guys. Mm -hmm. And I'm not being funny about that. Like it's just a lot of people coming to me have had the success. So what a high performance success or high performance coach really does, I believe, helps you shift your relationship to what performance even means. That's very key. So you have to unwire, break free of what yeah. burning yourself to the ground, being the leader that's not emotional, look like you have it all together. Um, like I said, working 20 hour days, sacrificing your health and your family, like whatever. You have to rewire that, right? So breaking free of that old relationship and getting in alignment with the new one. So then the things that we do next for rewiring healthy high performance and flow state performance get easier once we've taken that saran wrap off. Mm-hmm. Creating high performance, again, I say high performance because that's what everybody knows, but when people start working with me, they realize it's flow state performance, that we're literally teaching you that when life gets lifey, when you have adversities come to you internally, 
externally, externally like 2020, internally in your business, personal, professional, that you have the capability to be able to create high productivity, which is different than performance, okay, she's getting a lot done, but yeah. combining productivity and performance is flow state, where you're getting a lot done in a short period of time, your brain and body can handle that, okay, you guys, side note, I can do 20 things now that usually would take me a whole week to do, five years ago, I can do in two days, Okay, because I've trained myself into a healthy, high performance. But a good high performance coach will get rid of the old story, rewire, align new behavior. Now we're in flow state of performance that requires you to understand how you, in particular, create productivity and performance no matter what's happening at you, internally, externally. Then teach your team to do the same internally and externally. This is when I sometimes do workshops on teams if that's necessary. And then from there, we hone in on where do you specifically want to create healthy, high performance in? Mm. What areas of your business? What areas of your personal life? You guys, every, I just let you know, we don't separate per se, but it allows me to be more specific with people because we all know everything touches everything. That's right. Once we start creating patterns and flow state in a certain area of your business, Brian, we start seeing things like, wow, my relationship with my wife is better. Or, wow, I'm mm -hmm. noticing I'm doing really well with movement and going up higher in weight at the gym. There's reasons mm -hmm. why that happens. So, But it just helps me get more specific with people yeah. to be what you really want to be healthy, high performance in, which is AKA flow state. Yeah change the relationship to performance. Now we get you in more of a flow state, no matter the environment. You guys, I'm gonna tell you right now, I truly believe there are a lot of things that leaders need and high performers need to accelerate things in a world that there's a lot going on. That's hard, okay? Mm -hmm. I believe you can absolutely have the success, but I will say it requires you to create a better resilience and a better performance, no matter the environment. You guys, that is a superpower. Think about that. Yeah. Whether a, a small little pebble in your shoe happens that day or something big, you guys, having a healthy, and this is my TEDx, you guys, mastering the chemistry of resilience and incorporates how to be a high performer too. But understand when you can actually maximize your resilience and performance in a healthy mm -hmm. way and you can keep on going and accelerating your machine with you and your team, no matter what's going on out there, you guys, everything else gets easy. You become mm -hmm. unstoppable. So I truly believe that's the superpower needed yeah. for any leader and for anyone, but leaders in particular, because most of you are paving new paths. Mm -hmm. Many of the leaders I work with are thought leaders. They're wanting to look at things differently, challenge the norm mm -hmm. of today for a variety of reasons. You better have that mind-body resilience. You better be able to train your team or get someone in there to do that to get them high, you know, mm -hmm. performing well, per, you know, producing well and high, you know, productivity. But I'm telling you, if you can master, master the chemistry of your brain and your body to work for you, no matter what, and it can. I've yeah. actually, we all have seen this, you guys. I've actually seen people accelerate, shatter the ceiling on, on, on goals, even in 2020. You know, people became millionaires during the depression. Because this is possible. This is possible. It is possible for you, even if you're rolling your eyes right now, like no, no, it is everyone. Trust me, I've done that too. Like, yeah, you say that. When you actually try some of these techniques, when you listen to this podcast, get in your flow, connect with Brian and I, I'm telling you, we raise the ship together by mm -hmm. us going going up together. You absolutely can. And I'm going to invite you in, all of you today, to tip your, your toe into this. Tip your toe into this and see if you start seeing some shifts. And when you do, mm -hmm. you know, start going, aha, Jennifer was right. <laughs> yes. Well, I got to ask you this question because yeah. I'm listening to this and, and you know, I'm a believer in the coach yeah. piece and I've got mm -hmm. a few coaches, different purposes and things that align yeah. up. And I'm like, yeah. you know what? It's one of those, like, you want to live your life to the fullest, have yeah. no regrets looking back. I'm like, if they can help me get there, you know, I always yeah. say you would invest in something that would make you better, yeah. right? I mean, it's pretty obvious. Yes, yeah. I would. Yeah. yeah. So talk to me about this piece of people that are thinking, okay, this all sounds really good. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I would love to know your journey. Mm -hmm. What's something you've learned this year mm -hmm. or currently learning right now? Yeah. Because I think things are changing mm -hmm. and I always love, I'm yes. curious. I love to get inside the head of a yeah. thinker and and a leader. Yeah. What do you, what have you learned this year or something that you're learning? Wow. You know, um, you know, it's so interesting, everybody. If any of you have heard the phrase like new level, new devil, you know, it's, I will say, you know, even though I'm always continuing to master my mind, master my body, you know, trying to always stay in that flow state, 
there's challenges that have come up to, to me in the last couple of years, some family challenges, some health challenges myself. You guys, I'm in the game. I just want you guys to know I'm in the game. And one thing that has come up, two separate things for me a lot, probably in the last year to two years is this. One, stay in the game. It's a process. Be patient. It never looks linear. Stay in the game. Be patient. Stay in the game. Be patient. Mm -hmm. The second thing I'm going to be honest that I've really learned that's actually helped me, and this is something I teach in my program, you guys, but something I've really learned a lot about is staying in my truth. Mm -hmm. You know, staying what I believe is right for Jennifer, speaking my truth, acting my truth, being my truth, be do say. Mm -hmm. When we don't do that, everyone, including myself, because I've done that sometimes where I'm like, I'm all about coaches, you guys. I have mentors and everything. But sometimes we, we on social, we see things and we start stepping out of our lane. Mm -hmm. And I know I'm like, why am I feeling depression today? Why am I feeling anxious? Why is my performance going down? You guys, I still have days. I just want to be clear. If someone asked me, side note, like if I ever get depressed, I'm like, you guys, of course. I'm like human. I get depressed. You know, But usually it's like bounce back up mm -hmm. right away. Like I've mastered that. So I'm human. I want you guys all to know, even though I teach this stuff, sometimes I have days I'm human. But I will say that is... Um, one thing I've learned even is the next layer for me and my journey of creating the best version of me is absolutely knowing that the times when I don't courageously stay in my path, everyone, and let's just be honest, a lot of you can probably relate, you know, and this is not just since post 2020 became, we became acutely aware of it, but where we would shut our mouth or not do mm -hmm. certain things because we thought it just wasn't the right thing to do. And in what happened is you guys, we created an identity crisis in ourselves. We literally, our brain was like, well, you're saying one thing you want and you're doing another. It actually was creating brains that look like those that had bipolar. You guys, this is research like post 2020, mm -hmm. we started having more anxiety, depression after that. And what I noticed for me, the biggest lesson that has been the next layer for me as I'm going accelerated rates with my speaking across the country, mm. I'm doing more, increasing my bandwidth is staying aligned with me, mm -hmm. Jennifer, be, do say, you get, I'm going to tell you, I actually challenge all of you guys on this. I actually have challenged some of my clients. I'm like, spend a week being very cognizant at the end of the day audit. Are you being truthful to yourself? Are you staying in alignment with yourself? Are you doing what you say you're going to do mm -hmm. every day? Most people fail <laughs> the first day because you don't realize how much you're doing for others and you're justifying yeah. it. So my biggest lesson that's taken me to the next level and I'm always evolving is remembering that and fully expressing myself. I've really been speaking, you know, I've been a speaker a lot of my life, but the last year to two, I've really accelerated it. And it's easy for me even sometimes to hide on stage mm -hmm. because you guys, I actually cry on stage. Sometimes I can't believe I'm cried here. Like I get emotional. You know, I used to be, be told that I was too much when I was a kid because I'm an emotional person. Yeah. And I've hidden sometimes on stage and my coach called me out on that. I'm going to be totally honest. He called me out. And he's like, Jennifer, I love the speech, but when you were telling that story, you usually, you know, get emotional about it. What were you doing there? It's like, well, I didn't uh, 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 uh. And I remember after the speech, I didn't feel good about it. I'm like, it's actually a good speech. And people were like, yeah, it was good. You know, but I didn't connect with them mm -hmm. because I wasn't fully me. So even stuff like that, everyone, you know, so what I've really had to go in the next level to in the last year to two in my journey is really, truly, it's a process. Mm -hmm. Be patient with yourself. Give yourself grace. But number two, be, do, say. Be, mm -hmm. do, me. For me. Yeah. And when I catch myself, there's no shame. Okay, why? Why did I do that? Why did I move out of that? Why did I kind of, kind of pull back? Be your fullest expression, everyone. We need your fullest expression, your fullest, healthiest expression. When you have integrity with yourself, that is such an anchoring in your body. Your, remember, when you don't have integrity, what happens to your brain and body? It gets really scattered because it's constantly mm -hmm. then trying to create homeostasis because it's like, well, wait, you just did that, but you want to do this? Like, I'm confused. It's literally like I'm confused. Yeah. People are like, I eat well. I, I sleep eight hours a night. No, I'm, da -da -da -da. I, I'm like, well, what did you do today that you weren't integrity with? Like, I just kind of make them own it. They're like, well, you know, I took this call that I didn't want to take and I went too mm -hmm. long on work, you know, and I was planning to make a boundary leaks you guys mm -hmm. in our integrity to ourselves and then we wonder why we don't feel good and we don't have flow state performance yes. it's those micro leaks of justification because high performers i'm a recovering people pleaser i'm a recovering perfectionist that's a trauma response you guys do mm -hmm. everything for everyone else and then i'm like why am i feeling so exhausted by the end of the night and i'm doing all this good stuff 
integrity, the self, Mm -hmm. you guys, there's something to that stay in yourself. It creates a huge regulation homeostasis in your body where it's not constantly trying to bounce back and forth. Like, what are you doing, man? (laughs) It's like, that's what your brain does. You guys, it was like, what are you doing? You're saying one thing and doing another. So have the courage, take a deep breath, have a coach, to keep mm-hmm. you accountable. They're not there to shame you, but like my coach has made me own it. Like, Jennifer, what are you doing there? And I'm like, yeah, okay, that's true. So I'm constantly evolving, you guys. I'm constantly learning, but that's the biggest lesson I've really learned and taken to heart is really have integrity of be, do, and say what I say I'm going to do, mm-hmm. aligning and staying in my core values, watching the small leaks, because mm-hmm. the small leaks are the things we justify that we don't think are actually counting. They actually are the big ones that do. It's just like a small leak on a roof. That's right. It's going to implode. Watch the micro leaks. I would justify taking calls from relationships that were not good because they're family, but it's just 10 mm-hmm. minutes that drained me. And then I wondered why I was having trouble going back to my computer and not getting work done because of that small leak. The micro leaks. Exactly. And I'm like, and I'd say to her, like, I'm in alignment. And I'm like, and like and again, my coach, you guys, zoom out. Like, really? Did you do this? Did you do that? I'm like, oh, yeah, I did that. Uh. Yeah. <laughs> They tell you the truth. Yes. That's what's there. And that's, I love that. So yeah. I would say that that's been my biggest thing I've noticed. And the, the bi- other big thing is, like I said, I get to speak now my truth, my mm-hmm. journey. Some of the things I've shared with you, I'm doing a TEDx coming up, but I love, I love speaking. It fulfills me in a way that competing did. And it's, I'm not sure why mm-hmm. that is. I'm still working that out because it's not mm-hmm. competition. I think it's because I'm still influencing in a really powerful mm-hmm. way. And I let on a team and influenced and, you know, I do believe God requires some of us to step in as influences, mm-hmm. as leaders. And I really love that impact. And it's really not about me and the mic. It's just, I find that that's where I light up. So I create mm-hmm. transformation on stage. I'm a yeah. healer on stage because I've just taken healing from the brick and mortar to on stage. Mm-hmm. And when you know, people come up to me afterwards and say, wow, it's going to, you know, this is going to help me so much in my business or more yet when they're like, you know what? I wanted to check out this last year. Thank you. I'm like, that is enough for me. I'm like, amen. That's, you know, that, that's enough. So I'm really enjoying that part of my journey is um, being out in the speaker kind of spotlight, but it's also making me level up mm-hmm. on doing what I say I'm going to do because now that I'm out in the spotlight more, I mean, you guys, and it's not about, oh, look at me. It's just now I'm, people are looking at me like, you know, is she doing it? Like, and this is not about me being perfect. This is not about me f- afraid that they're going to be abandoning me if I don't do it perfect. But I do expect more for me now. Mm-hmm. You know, I've really gone through some stuff and I want to be a leader that leads by example, but also shows that I'm human. Be honest in integrity when I'm flip, you know, falling off on, you know, on into the weeds and then getting back in. This is why I have coaches that mm-hmm. actually love me enough to be honest, to be truthful. And, you know, I don't want you to be my friend if you can't be honest with me. Yeah. I want you to say things that kind of piss me off a little bit sometimes. Yeah. You know, I've, said, I've said to my coaches, I'm like, I, I think you're a good coach if sometimes I'm mad at you because mm-hmm. you're, you're mirroring, you're pushing the edge. You know, good coaches, by the way, everybody know when to create a safe space for you to land and really hold your hand when you can't believe, but then nudge you up mm-hmm. and pull you up. And that's a sign of any good coach. I'm going to say that even when I was in sports, my yeah. favorite coaches were those coaches that were like, let me hug you that stunk and like Jennifer rise. So mm-hmm. there's a balance of both, I would say. Um, but a good coach does that. So I would say that to anyone, you know, stay in your truth, align with your truth, figure out what that is, get someone to believe that for you, mm-hmm. um, hold you accountable and let yourself shine. We need your fullest yeah. expression. Remember unique blueprint. I'm yeah. an identical twin and I have one. So do that everyone. We need you and we need you more than ever in a world that is hurting. Yeah. Amen. <laughs> yeah. Amen. Well, this has been amazing. Yes. I didn't know some of this about you. I get to kind of unpack that yeah. as the show goes on. And yeah. you made me think about this too when you're talking about the days. And, you know, I reframed something the other day after listening to yeah. Deion Sanders was on Ed Milet's podcast. Yeah. And he talked about yeah. this. I don't have bad days anymore. I made the decision I don't have bad days. Yeah. I have bad moments. I can have a bad couple of minutes. I can yes. have just little bad pockets. Yeah. But my day, yeah. I get to decide if it's yeah. a good day. And I said, you know what? I've done that part of the time. I'm going to do that all the time. Yes. All days are good days because yes. I'm alive. God's yes. allowed me another day. Yes. So I'd invite people, if you haven't heard that, listen to it. Yes. The other one you said, stay in the game. Mm-hmm. And that's what I think as you talk about this, I always go back, like yeah. what's your competitive edge? Yes. People could hear yours today and what you've been through yeah. and overcome. Yeah. I think people are going to relate to it and go, yeah. that was me. Yeah. Or I'm going through that now. Yeah. I know seasons in my own life and people can look at it and go, okay, not only that, I can relate to it. But now I say... We don't just want to make you feel better and inspire you. It is right. what are the tools you can leave here today? Yes. And you can take things that you shared. We're yeah. going to put your sites and all the links and yeah, all the stuff because I want people to listen to your first talk. Yeah. You got your other TEDx yeah. talk coming up. 
But I always say, when you can figure out what that next mm-hmm. action step is, mm-hmm. that gap, you can narrow down, just go take it. Yes. And I love what you said. Like I'm sitting here laughing too, yes. because I got to say, all my friends are like, 20 burpees? <laughs> I mean, no. Um, so yeah, maybe you want to go dance. <laughs> right, maybe you do exactly. Let's not break music. a leg. <laughs> but uh, I, I, I love that there. Any parting words or anything mm, yeah. that you want to leave the audience with? Oh, gosh. Um, I would say two things. I, I'm actually getting emotional about this. Um, come home to you. Never forget her. Never forget him. Always come back to her. That makes me emotional. Um, and when you do that, the second part I will say is this will get easier. The second part, sometimes you have to take a leap and build your wings on the way down. So just remember those two things and, um, you got this, you got this. (laughs) Mm, Wow. That's a good way to end the show. And I'll tell you guys, you're going to want to listen back. I know these are the ones that get me excited because in the moment I'm listening and I'm going through and I'm processing it all. And Afterwards, when you listen back, I think you're going to see not only at the end, but the emotion that Jennifer has, and it's because she's connected to who she is, mm-hmm. her purpose, and why God has her here. Mm-hmm. And I believe it was to share some of her story with some of you today. And so mm-hmm. my ask, all I say is share this with your friends, share it with people that you believe need to hear it. And also for yourself, what's the action you're going to take? Mm-hmm. We don't, as I say this, we don't want to just inspire and motivate you. Mm-hmm. There's plenty of people that I say do an amazing job of that. I want to challenge you and put you in that competitive edge that you have and i believe god's placed in you to go take the next action and so that's what we want to know emails dm us all the stuff you're gonna have our contact info and all of the links there make sure you connect up with jennifer if you've not already and listen to her podcast we got over here soul purpose podcast Mm -hmm. make sure you connect up if this has inspired you got you excited about something in your life now let's give you some more tools so you can continue to win as always we appreciate you listening in this is always a gift back and we always say is we bring guests on, they have uniqueness that God's given them, and they're gonna connect up with different ones of you as you listen to this. Leave us a review, let us know how we're doing with all of that, and as always, go out there and do something great in the world and inspire other people. We appreciate you, we'll catch you on the next episode. See ya!